Welcome to Life Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. We've spoken on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis previously, but today we're going to get into the details of the immunology of progressive pulmonary fibrosis or pulmonary fibrosis. It's important to understand as we continue to look for and combine effective therapies. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, is a progressive and often fatal chronic interstitial lung disease characterized by enhanced extracellular matrix. But let's really talk about what that is. You see, your lung is a bunch of pipes leading to a bunch of balloons stacked on top of each other. I've said that before. But when we take a closer look at the balloons, we can see a single cell layer full of type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. These are lung cells, and they surround a capillary membrane. The type 2 pneumocytes secrete surfactant molecules, there's four types of those, which help defend the body against infection and reduce surface tension to allow the lung to expand. The type 1 pneumocytes, which are lung cells as well, make up a single layer to allow oxygen to travel through them to get into the blood vessel. And that capillary is the blood vessel, and that carries red blood cells. This is where gas exchange takes place. Red blood cells travel through this capillary pipe in the alveoli, the balloon, and receive oxygen and drop off the carbon dioxide. The extracellular matrix is a non-cellular component that's present in all tissues. It's full of water, proteins, and polysaccharides, sugars. This system allows and creates the foundation or the cytoskeleton of the body to stand on. It's full of receptors and communicates with cells as well. We have to know about this system, or organ as I like to call it, to fully understand the immunology of IPF. Again, when I'm talking immunology, I'm talking cells of the innate and the adaptive immune system. Neutrophils and macrophages are examples of innate cells, while T cells and B cells are examples of adaptive immune cells. When there's physical trauma or smoke, or something in the airway epithelial cells that they don't like, they're gonna secrete cytokines. One of the cytokines is called interleukin-8 or CXCL8, just another name for it. This cytokine activates and attracts neutrophils by binding to its receptor CXCR1 or CXCR2, which is on the neutrophil. This binding is gonna to lead to the release of the granules within the neutrophil, which are full of proteins like elastase, cathepsin B, proteinase 3. Neutrophil elastase is gonna break down collagen, but it also promotes myofibroblast differentiation and fibroblast proliferation, which essentially leads to more fibrosis. When you look at the macrophage, this can be a little bit confusing because see, there's M1 macrophages and there's M2 macrophages. M1 macrophages are activated by lipopolysaccharide and can produce TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6, which maintain inflammation. M2 macrophages are activated by interleukin-4, interleukin-13, and interleukin-10, think type 2 inflammation and asthma, and can become pro-fibrotic to support wound healing. These M2 macrophages secrete TGF-beta, FGF, PDGF, VEGF. These are just growth factors. We're going to come back to this at another time. They also lead to the production of more extracellular matrix. They also secrete a molecule called CCL18, which attracts T cells and is present in bronchoalveolar lavage fluid during an exacerbation of IPF. Probably means that macrophages are involved here. Monocytes, innate lymphoid cells type 2, mast cells, and dendritic cells are involved as well. They secrete and respond to molecules in the serum that activate the inflammatory response, which in turn leads to that fibrotic response. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I really appreciate you guys taking this deep dive into the immune system to understand how cells that first arrive to the scene contribute to fibrotic pathogenesis. In part two of our series, we're gonna discuss the adaptive immune response and how its cells contribute to pulmonary fibrosis. Thanks a lot for joining and we'll see you next time.